Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going over my process for making animated emotes. If you have questions about Clip Studio Paint animation, go check out the animation playlist on this channel. I also have a video up about my emote making process and a past live stream that you can go watch if you want to see the process in real time. I'm going to go over two different ways that you can animate an emote today. First, we're going to cover how to start with a movement in mind and animate the emote from scratch. Then I'm going to show you guys some techniques for animating emotes that are already completed static emotes. If you're not sure what to animate, go check out some of your favorite streamers animated emotes or try looking on Etsy for some inspiration. We're going to start with an animation canvas that's 1000 by 1000 pixels. I add a little extra to the edges so that I have room for color swatches and notes if I need them. Go ahead and paste in your sketch of your emote. I already designed and sketched these ahead of time. I'm going to make a quick animatic for how I want this arm to move and the hand to wave and how the eyes will sparkle. I know from experience I can use interpolation to move the arm and only have to draw it once. I can rotate it from the elbow joint. I also know that the eye sparkles are a really simple frame by frame animation. So I'm going to set up the animatic for the arm as just a regular layer and the eye sparkles as an animation folder with multiple frames. Once those are done, I'm going to start inking my emote. I know the face and body can be static, so I'm going to build those like I normally would and then place another layer containing the arm layers above that. Then we're going to put the animation folder for the finished eye sparkles on top of all of that. I'm inking the part of the arm that moves on a separate layer than the rest of the body. Same with the coloring. We want to keep everything for the arm in a folder together and away from the rest of the body layers. Once all the coloring, shading, and effects are done, I'm moving the animatic for the eye sparkles up to the top so I can trace them easier. The last step is to turn on the animatic for the arm movement and keyframe the finished arm to match. Make sure to move the rotation point to the elbow before you turn on the keyframes or the movement will look really weird when it tries to use the middle access point. Next, I'm going to go over animating an emote from a flat static emote that you already have. I'm going to add a small reminder here. Please don't take other artists work without their permission. Don't use my teachings for evil. Anyways. There are a few limitations to this, but mess around with some options and you can find some really fun movements that don't require a ton of work or redrawing the entire emote from scratch. I personally don't really like the look of flat emotes that some people use warp animation on. I think they look really cheesy. So I tried to constrain my static to moving choices to what will look intentional. Some good examples of this that I've had a lot of luck with in the past are color changing like a light show or a rave, adding hearts or stars, moving the mouth, blinking the eyes, changing the color of the cheeks for blushing or anger, moving hands or arms. It can be a little tricky to figure out how to cut up the emote and what needs to be painted over, but relatively easy to undo or save a copy and try again if you don't like the results. For this emote, I'm going to have her wink and add some little stars. I'm going to make my animatics the same way that I did the first emote, but on top of a finished emote instead of a sketch. Once the animatic is done, I'm going to ink the blinking action, making sure to make each frame a folder rather than just a layer. After I'm done inking, I'm going to go back and add a new layer under the lines and fill in the colors to match the original emote. It's helpful at this point to be able to turn off the original layers for shadow and light, but not necessary. If 
you have nothing but like a flattened JPEG or PNG of the emote, you can still get a pretty good match from just color picking carefully. I'll need to add some shading to match the underlying work and some blush to the cheek area so that this patch job doesn't look super weird. I'm adding any shading, highlights, and color gradients inside each frame's folder so that it doesn't show up in any of the other frames. When the wink movement is done, I'm going to add the glitter or stars or whatever this stuff is. It just uses the same process that I demoed in my first animation video and a similar process to how we added the eye sparkles in the previous emote. Once I'm all done, I'm ready to export my finished emotes. I'm going up to File and then Export Animation. I want Animated Sticker A, P, and G as the option. I'm going to name the file and then I'll get this little dialog box with some settings. This is where you set the sizes for the export and the frame rate. I'm going to set the size to 500 by 500. I'm going to leave the frame rate at the defaults and then I'm going to make sure that the delete blank space checkbox is unchecked. If we leave this checked, it will delete the transparent pixels around the edges of the emote and make it not square. This will cause issues when we try to upload the emotes to Twitch, YouTube, or Discord later on. I export a big version at 500 pixels when I make emotes for other uses, but the sizes you'll need for the actual uploads are 112, 56, and 28 pixel squares. Export the emote in these three sizes and then move them over to a PC. I'm sorry I don't have a good APNG to GIF converter recommendation for iPad at the moment. If you know one, please put it in the comments. That would make my process a lot smoother. Over on PC, we're going to use a program called APNG to GIF converter. I found this on SourceForge and I'll link it for you guys below. You can also use a browser-based APNG to GIF converter like easygif.com. Just make sure you're not losing a bunch of resolution when it uploads. I'm gonna put each APNG through the converter and then they are ready to upload to the streaming site. That's about it for the process that I use for making animated emotes. If you guys have questions or suggestions, or you have specific questions about this process, please leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to help you out. If you're looking for more Clip Studio inspiration, you can check out my recent video on coloring comics. You can support the channel by liking, commenting, and subscribing here on YouTube. You can also support the channel and my other projects over on Patreon like these awesome folks. This video is very generously brought to you by Terror Billy Jean, Anthony Jutz, Jesse C, Tuna, and Snooky. Thank you guys so much for your support, and we'll see you next time.